um, I'm in Canada. Uh, I think I think people should hear stuff like this. Um, I've, I've I've been in a health crisis for years here, and you know, had to figure out so much on my own, and um, had to get as educated as possible, as a, as educated as it could be. And th I mean, this is what people, this is what either complex patients or rare patients end up having to do. You end up having to get as educated as possible while tra trying to navigate a healthcare system that you know nothing about and trying to navigate how doctors operate. And, and um, I have severe apnea. Uh, it took decades to diagnose, fought and fought for diagnosis. It got to the point where it became life-threatening and I was still fighting for diagnosis and healthcare. And um, I'm, uh, and, and, life-threatening insomnia. It got to the point where, you know, I was only sleeping one or two hours every 24 hours, and it just didn't stop. And even after I, I finally acquired CPAP <coughs> five years ago, the insomnia did not get any better, and I was still stopping breathing. And um, so... I'm now sleeping upright in a chair and trying to force, trying to keep this open, trying to force my skull up all night, trying to, and then, you know, uh, with CPAP, you're supposed to keep your mouth shut and keep your mouth closed and the forced air is supposed to be utilized through your nose and it will force air and try to open this airway up and that's not sufficient for me so I'm trying to now it's gotten to the point where I, I am trying to keep my mouth open trying to open this up and I'm so sleep deprived that for a couple of years I fought to I have KRE malformation as well, if you're medically educated. It's a brain condition diagnosed with a brain MRI. And people with Chiari uh, are high risk for severe sleep apnea and uh, obstructive apnea as well as central apnea. And they don't want to give me surgery here for the um, Chiari. So I figured if they if they're not going to give me surgery, then I uh, then I want a trach a tracheostomy. A tracheostomy is they cut a permanent hole in here, and they put a little plastic device, a tube down there, so that at night you can stay breathing. And um, so I fought for fought to try to get a trach. They didn't want to do a trach. Um, So I, I'm sitting here. I had three hours of sleep last night. I, I can't continue on like this, right? And just sitting here, I notice now for the past couple years, when I'm at rest, when I'm watching TV, when I'm sitting here on my phone, I'll have my mouth closed, but my jaws dropped, my teeth are not touching, and I'm trying to open this up, right? So either my mouth is open and I'm dropping my jaw and trying to keep this open or I'm going like this unconsciously unconsciously trying to open this up and 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 I notice when I'm not doing that I'm I'm literally stopping breathing because everything is so lax and everything is closing up on me right like this is severe sleep apnea and I'm, I'm, 
and and at night I'm trying to keep my jaw open. I'm trying to shove my skull up. I'm so exhausted. I'm in so much pain. Upright, I'm trying to keep my airway open. Like I'm a human being trying to consciously keep my airways open so I can breathe day and night. And um, and I also feel something is, you know, I don't know if it's my trachea. I feel pain in here and st stress and pressure. Like it's it's a feat just to breathe, right? It's 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 chronic work and stress just to keep breathing. And I suffer from hypoventilation and my body just doesn't really want to breathe and everything just wants to collapse. And this is considered rare. And see, that's the thing. They won't have direct, honest, direct conversations with you. They won't say, look, this is really rare. Um, and here's the thing. So, so, so you're just left, right? You're, you're just left at home to die or, or, or unalive or just be driven into the ground and go into a nursing home. And here's the thing. You're left to research and research and figure everything out on your own. There's no advocacy here. There's no one actually helping you. And I figured, well, like the whole trick thing. Like I, I had to figure out that that might be an option for me. But here's the thing. Here's why they don't want to do a trach. And, and no one will tell you this. No one will tell you any of this. No one will help assist. There is a test called a drug-induced scope. Uh, a D-I-S-E. And while you're awake, they put a camera down your throat. And they give you drugs so you fall asleep and they can see exactly where are you closing up? Where is the problem? It took years of just intense begging and, and suffering and pleading till a specialist finally told me the truth that this province doesn't have the equipment in the hospital to do, to do the test. So rather than tell you that, they'll they'll not provide you any information. They'll just send you away and they, they know you're suffering. No one is willing to provide you this valuable information. So uh, a surgeon, once he gets those test results, he can see if how terribly you're closing up and if a trach is, is warranted.